if someone said to us, why don't you grow up? We wouldn't like it. I'm sure we would be insulted because every one of us, every one of us, even my children among us, want to think of ourselves as mature. So why don't you grow up? Borders on being insulted. We are reminded by the Gospels and by Jesus Christ himself that forgiveness and the ability and the willingness to forgive is a strong sign of Christian maturity. If we can forgive, it means that we belong to Christ and that the forgiving is a sign of Christian grown-upness and belonging to Christ, living our lives as He would have us live them. If we truly belong to Jesus Christ, we avoid the vendetta. When we have been hurt by anyone, or insulted, or cheated in some way, or disappointed by some way, by someone, we forgive. More importantly, we forget the forgiving. Now, I admit to you from my own personal experience, that is not easy. We need the grace of God to do that. Forgiving is one thing, but forgetting that we have forgiven is quite another thing. Never letting another to forget that we have forgiven them is really a very troubling thought that some of us could have. It's a sign that we have not really forgiven. It's a sign that we are not really the mature Christians, the grown up Christian people we would like others to think that we are. If we truly belong to Jesus Christ, we live it out to the full, even in this difficult matter of having to forgive whenever we've been hurt. We forgive and we choose not to remember the forgiving. In imitation of Jesus Christ, we must always remember God's dealings with you and with me. Can any one of us say in truth that God has not pardoned us many times to having hurt him, sometimes in serious ways, and haven't we always found his mercy and his forgiveness when we confessed sincerely and contritely and trusted in him? So how mature can it be of us spiritually when we decline to forgive, when we refuse to forgive the wrong done against us. Does God forgive and forget? Well, we have his own word for it in the covenant he made with Israel in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament book of Jeremiah the prophet, God promises, and I quote, I will forgive them their iniquity, and I will remember not their sin. Can we afford to do any less for others than God is willing to do for us? Oh yes, God forgives, and he chooses not to remember. I will put your sin as far away from me as the east is from the west. I imagine that when I get to heaven and I say to the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry for that sin, he's going to say, what sin? I will remember it. He remembers all right, but he chooses not to. And we must make the same choice. Now, admittedly, that is not very easy to do. And God doesn't ask it of us because he thinks that it's easy. No, he asks it of us because he knows what is in our best 
interest. When we say, I will forgive you with our lips and not with our hearts. When I say, I forgive, but under my breath, that I'll always remember, and I will continue to hold this grudge against you, remembering it. When we refuse to let it go, we do ourselves great harm. Both spiritually, and you know what? Physically. I'm convinced we hurt ourselves physically and emotionally because many illnesses later in life has, have as their root cause hatred held within us for years. We'll never know how much harm we're doing ourselves. And medical research today does confirm that a person free from the tensions of resentment, of grudges, and hates, is a person healthy in body and in spirit. When you carry around with you inside the grudge and the resentment and the lack of true forgiveness, you make yourselves ill. So I ask you, has anyone heard that in some way recently? Did someone hurt you years ago? If you say you forgive him, have you mended the relationship as a proof that you have forgiven? A proof would be that the relationship in which you were hurt today after forgiveness has not changed. You're still in a good, friendly, loving relationship with the one who did you harm. Of course, it takes both love and patience and decision to forgive. It takes God's grace to be a forgiving person. It takes God's grace to receive the forgiveness and to accept it. It takes God's grace to offer forgiveness or to ask for it. Now, if the forgiveness is offered and not accepted, leave the matter to God. A wise man, a priest, one day told me that not every matter is settled on the stage of this world, but every matter, no matter what, will be settled on the stage of the next world. So forgive, forget, and leave the matter to God for your own health of mind, health of body, and health of soul. That is Christian.